My name is Terry Neal, and I'm one of the three sergeants at arms. If you have questions that uh, have to do with things that are not parliamentary procedure, you can talk to one of us, and, and Dan from Port. Um, if you, to be recognized by the chair, you stand until he recognizes. If, if you are going to uh, have problems with that, I have yellow cards that I can give you that you can wave in the air instead. Please raise your hand if you'd like one. If you are um, not wanting or unable to come up to the podium to speak, we will run a microphone to you and we're asking that you sit over in this part of the room so that microphone running is easier. Thank you very much. All right. Good morning. I'm Tim Illingworth. I'm the chair of this business meeting. Uh, my staff are Don Eastlake, parliamentarian, Linda Denneroff, secretary, Jesse Lipp, uh, deputy, and Paul Dormer, the timekeeper, plus the sergeants at arms that you saw earlier, and the video crew at the back, who may now wave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Don, do you want to run those quick slides that you had for? OK, uh, there are some sort of procedural slides, which is parliamentary, and it seems reasonable that I should go over. Uh, first, the people should be aware that the business meeting will be recorded, and uh, the uh, anybody can record, as well as the official videographers, if there is sound or video or whatever. And uh, these will be posted later. Um, there may be a short timeout in order to replace the recording media in the video. Uh, and it is, there is a procedure for stopping that or going into executive session effectively, stopping recording, but it's been rarely needed uh, and uh, it's unlikely we'll do that. Um, there are attendance sheets. You should have seen them as you came in. If you uh, didn't, uh, you should uh, be sure to write your name down there and remember which one you signed just so you can, instead of having to write all the information again each day, you can just check the column for the day you attended. Uh, you should silence your cell phones or other noise-making devices. Uh, do we have attendee ribbons? I think we not. Do. We do. Oh, the, okay, attendee ribbons are at the back. Great. Um, speak into the microphone. These microphones are actually quite sensitive, so it's not necessary to speak all that loudly, but you do need to speak into the microphone. If you turn and speak in a different direction, when you turn and speak in a different direction like I just did, it just doesn't work. <laughs> um, if you're unable to stand, we have the runners, as we mentioned. Uh, debate need not be factual, but must be civil. Uh, there's a slide on the procedures for appealing rules of the chair. I don't know if that will necessarily happen, but it's not too uncommon. Uh, yeah, there are these sheets, by the way, about uh, give you a summary of the some of the most uh, common points related to Robert's rules and the order of priority of motions and so forth. So uh, if somebody, if there is an appeal, it needs to be seconded, and uh, the chair states their reason for the ruling. The, Appealer states why they want to uh, overcome that. Then, if debate is allowed, which it depends, if it's an appeal from an undebatable motion, then there's, debate is not allowed. But if it's in normal cases, there'd be debate. It's limited to only one speech per person, except the chair who can speak at both at the beginning and at the end. And then there's a vote as to whether the chair would be sustained. So it takes a majority in the negative to overrule the chair. Um, there's a, this is just a brief overview of the current. Uh, agenda. Today is Thursday, the preliminary business meeting. We'll do the agenda setting, debate time limits, things like that. Uh, take reports from the committees that are available today. Uh, and we can actually act on standing rule changes and resolutions. Uh, and uh, the, actually, the order is not quite what's shown on this slide, but it should be okay. Uh, and, uh, and there's a line at the bottom which is incorrect. Uh, the Fantasy Inquisition is Friday, not Thursday. I'll update that and uh, put that on. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so this is a result of editing last year's slides, of course. Anyway, so then uh, the first business meeting on Friday will be the M Mark Protection Committee election. Oh. Okay, yep, everything should be moved a day later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's not the that's copying you know, and pasting from last yeah, year. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, you know. Yeah. Maybe it was nominations and tomorrow's elections. Today is nominations and tomorrow is elections. That is definitely correct. Um, anyway. So 
let's just go ahead with a preliminary agenda. So, uh, and the first, which is, uh, so I guess the date, day of week references here are all incorrect. So basically what we're going to uh, do today is the time sitting and uh, Mark Protection Committee nominations, committee reports that are available, and uh, we can act on uh, changes to the standing rules. So one other slide, last slide here, is that at the preliminary business meeting, there are motions available to postpone indefinitely and object to consideration. Uh, object to consideration is if you think something is sufficiently embarrassing or whatever that it should not even be debated at all. It will not debate it, it, the um, not only is the, the is this cut off debate? You, you have to do this right away before there's been any debate on the motion or any subsidiary motions accepted. The motion to object to consideration is not debatable and it takes three quarters vote to object to consideration. Uh, you can also postpone indefinitely, which is uh, only takes two thirds and kills the motion for this year, but uh, you not, it, it does. Uh, allow debate uh, with a, li a limit four minutes max split between the two sides. And you cannot do either of these if there is a constitutional amendment up for ratification. That's something already passed last year, which we are, uh, are considering ratifying this year. So that's it for all the process stuff. And the next thing would be time limit starting with the uh, standing rule changes. Right. Jim. Yes. Uh, wrong, wrong. <laughs> wrong did you recognize me, sir? <laughs> yes, I will recognize you. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm Kevin Stanley, the WSPIS Division Manager, and uh, there are a number of things, uh, there's a, at least one thing I'd like to call attention to in those slides that is truly my fault for not having actually proofread anything that was sent to me. Uh, and I, again, apologize, but uh, the uh, video crew, again, Lisa Hayes and Scott Sanford, uh, it, those videos that are coming off their cameras in batches, and therefore there will be occasional short breaks to pull stuff off of the cameras. But the piece of the slide that talks about live streaming, that is, again, a, an artifact left over from last year. This meeting is not being live streamed, and I just want, uh, that has been a concern of some people one way or the other, so I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Right, thank you. Right, I would like to start, since we've got all the financial reports, by taking those and ask, noting that the anticipation one has the wrong year all over it. I think one, one of the four dates is right, <laughs> and, the others, and the others have not been updated from last year, but it looks a sensible report. I hadn't noticed any others in any of the other reports. Does anyone have questions about any of the financial reports? Seeing none, we accept them. That's in section F dealt with entirely, just like that. Um, I would like to see if we have committees reporting today, able to report today. First, on the standing committee's side, the Mark Protection Committee. Do we have a report from them? Kevin, thank you. Wait, hang on, I've got to catch up a second. Um, I'm trying to correct the ah, leave them. <laughs> yeah. I'm almost done. Okay, so now i got to get to the committee report. All right. Go ahead, Kevin. Mr. Chairman, I am Kevin Stanley, the current chairman of the WSFIS Mark Protection Committee, your only truly permanent body established by the Constitution. We are also the custodians of Worldcon Intellectual Property, a uh, California nonprofit tax exempt corporation that we control that manages our service marks. Our written report is in your agenda. It was provided in advance. The only item that I'm calling out as a, a, what I would call a substantial threat and also a success. And it's on page 35 in the middle. And during last year, the Flemish language portion of Belgian television broadcasting, uh, VRT, launched a new literary prize. Uh, I, that's what I said. I, it probably may have sounded like BRT. It, uh, 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 yes. V, v as in Victor is the first letter that I intended to read there. Thank you. Uh, uh, 
they were launching a prize in honor of author Hugo Klaus, and they were going to call it the Hugo Award, and had begun to promote it. Uh, Nicholas White, who was last year's Hugo administrator, lives there, and he made initial contact with them at our request. We did a bit of back and forth discussions with them, and they did eventually agree to rename their prize the Hugo Kloss Trophy, and they will not in their own material call them the Hugos. The committee believes that one of the reasons that we were able to reach a successful negotiation with them without having to call in expensive attorneys in particular is the fact that as of last year, um, Hugo Award is among the items, uh, sorry, is among the intellectual property service marks owned by WIP in the European Union. And that was a good use of our money to get it. Everything else has been a mostly routine year for us. And unless there are any questions, we have nothing further to report. Thank you, Mr. Stanley. Uh, next order of business will be nominations for elections to the Mark Protection Committee. The retiring members are Bruce Farr, Stephen Boucher, and Don Eastlake. Do <laughs> Andrew Adams, um, you did not ask if there were questions for the oh, protection committee. I, I beg I your pardon. Yep. Do you have a question yes, for them? I do have a question. <laughs> then, thank you. In that case, go there and I'll go over here. Andrew Adams, um, has uh, the uh, Mark Protection Committee and WUP looked at the issue regarding Brexit and the possible need to re-register the marks in the UK following 2019 or 2021? The committee has not undertaken this at this time. Uh, we are uh, periodically, but not often, because it costs money for them to open emails from us uh, in contact with our attorneys in the UK. And the last word that we had from them was, we don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any further questions for the Mark Protection Committee? Um, one quick note, Andrew, you might want to move further into the centre. You're right in line with some lights from me. <laughs> I can see you, yes, but <laughs> Andrew was right in <laughs> immediately under them, <laughs> and therefore not at all obvious. Right, as I was saying, um, elections. Do we have people who wish to be nominated to the Mark Protection Committee? Yes. Well, the number yourself. I'm sorry, I can't. Who? You, your name? <clears throat> Judith Bemis. I would like to stand in for the Mark Protection Committee. Yep. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Mm-hmm. This way on. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent that the, uh, the incumbent members uh, be renominated. Any objection to the uh, renominating all the incumbents as well, plus Judy? I only ask unanimous consent because ordinarily you can only make one nomination per person. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Stephen Boucher, Don Eastlake, and Bruce Farr are the retiring members. Mark Olson also has an expiring term this year, but he was an appointed, not an elected member. That's what it says. I trust you implicitly. <laughs> Terry. My name is Terry Neal, and I have a question for the chair. Um, if we unanimously renominate the current members, can we add to that, or is that the maximum we can have? Uh, we can add as many other nominees like Judy as we wish. Thank you. <laughs> It just means we'll have an actual election tomorrow rather than just uh, the usual coronation. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Any other nominees? Seeing none, close nominees. We have four nominees and there will therefore be an election tomorrow. Right. Next committee. Hold on, hold on. Give me a second to catch up. Right. Right. 
Uh, yes, I believe, unless Linda was about to tell us that, I believe there is something about having to give written uh, assent to be uh, nominated. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> um, Terry, can you run one back to Judy or somebody? Whoops. <laughs> do not do that. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I can do mine. Take your We can, I suspect, take the consent oh, of the usual suspects. Form. This is a voting form? Uh, don't gave word in the wrong forms. That's all right, we don't need them till tomorrow. Here, one. Right. Don, were you speaking for the nitpicking committee? Sure. Do we have a report? Yep. <laughs> Well, sort of. <laughs> My name is Donald Eastlake. I'm the uh, chairman of the Nipicking and Fly Specking Committee, uh, which doesn't mean much. We just sort of take turns. There's like four or five of us that do this thing. Uh, anyway, um, our job is to maintain a list of rulings and resolutions of continuing effect, which uh, have been posted on the web and are referred to in the agenda codifying the customs and usages of WISFUS and business meeting. Uh, the current members of the committee are willing to serve for another year. And uh, really our only uh, recommendation to this business meeting is to uh, pass constitutional amendment to D4, item D4 in the agenda, adding series to series. D2, yes. Can you speak a little bit louder? Yes, I can speak louder. Is this better? Yes. Do I need to repeat everything I said? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So I was saying that um, the job of the nitpicking and fly specking committee is to uh, codify customs and usages of WISTAS and maintain the list of rulings and resolutions of continuing effect, which uh, are posted on the web, and the pointer to is in uh, the agenda. So you can go look at that. The members of the committee are willing to serve for another year. Uh, by the way, the committee is provided for in the standing rules of the business meeting, so unless those are changed, uh, there will be such a committee and the chair gets to appoint them unless the assembly wishes to some other procedure. And our only recommendation to this business meeting is the passage of uh, item D2, uh, which is uh, the constitutional amendment whose short title is adding series to the series. Thank you. Any questions for the uh, nitpicking committee? I do have a slight nitpick about our report, uh, which is that my last name is Lip, not Pershing. <laughs> and so we should probably update that. We can do that. I okay, the secretary. It. I apologize, Jesse. It's again copying and pasting. <laughs> yeah, I completely understand. Thank you. Um, I shall reappoint the, the committee, plus I think it was Joe Van who also uh, wished to be added to the list, so I'll add her. Yeah, nice one. Right, is there anyone here from the Worldcon Runners Guide Editorial Committee wishing to report? Seeing none, I will ask them again tomorrow. Um, Folly Committee, anybody wish to report? Seeing Who are we adding to the, to the nitpicking? Joe Van Eckeren. And the Hugo Awards Study Committee, do they have a report? <laughs> Boy, do they have a report. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Questions? Why? Hello, Vincent Doherty, the uh, hopefully outgoing chair of the uh, Hugo Awards Study <laughs> Committee. Um, uh, thank you for uh, appointing us last year. Um, we did have many interesting conversations. Um, the report is uh, included in the pack, uh, 32 pages, as in all cases. If we'd had more time, it would be shorter. Um, there are a number of specific uh, recommendations that the, uh, the committee made. They're listed uh, D4, best podcasts. Uh, D5 on uh, professional and fan artist Hugo Awards. There's also a minority report, D5.1. And then a D6 on the short title, Comic Books and Graphic Stories. 
We also recommended, given that the, uh, uh, although we did reach broad consensus in a number of areas, there were a, a large number where we wanted to have a, a deeper conversation, and we would also recommend uh, extending or renewing the, uh, the committee. Um, I want to th personally thank the committee for their hard work. The, the list of names is at the, uh, the back, a large number of people who are very uh, active and very engaged. Uh, my own responsibilities for Dublin next year mean I, I can participate but not chair, and my I would recommend Cliff Dunn, who was uh, instrumental in helping us finalise the report as uh, chair, assuming you uh, agree to uh, renew or extend the committee again next year. The report is there. It has been online for some time, and I'm happy to take uh, questions here. Hi, my name is Petraea Mitchell. Um, my question is, if the committee is extended for another year, uh, how would people be able to volunteer for it? Uh, my intention is to appoint uh, Cliff Dunn as uh, Chair with power to co-opt, reject, and accept memberships. Okay. So it'd be down to him. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, and some procedure will be announced by him yes. uh, at the time. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions to the the back there? Uh, Lisa Paddle, not a question. Motion to thank Vince for his amazing work herding the cats. <laughs> <laughs> Any objection to thanking Vince for the cats? <laughs> they were mostly Good. friendly cats. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you very much, Vince. And that's dealt with most of section E and section F, so we can now go back to the top. And, uh, did we get a report from the No, not from Folly and not from uh, Walk on okay. Runners. runners. Okay. I'll ask for them again tomorrow. Okay. Right. Take a deep breath. <laughs> the, uh, we have our usual standing rule changes, business, no resolutions, business passed on and new amendments. For time, I propose to set ten, five minutes for everything except for D5, the controversial one with the fan, Hugo, fan and professional art Hugos, for which I propose 20 minutes. Does anybody object to setting that as a blanket set of times? Sorry? Right. And I don't need to say anything else. No. I'm trying to get through. Oh, it doesn't matter who objected. <laughs> no. In that case, I will make a motion myself to uh, set those times. Would somebody on up here care to second it? Second. Thank you. In, uh, therefore, they seem to me reasonable and it'll get us through quicker. Um, would you care to uh, state your reason for objection? Um, if I'm sorry, can well, you come, come up, to please. the microphone and state your name? No, no, no. So, we'll run it. We'll run it. No, it's okay. I want to get the name anyway. Oh, I didn't know she was on well, this. Ah, no. State your name. Wow, that's for a tall person. <laughs> okay, so my name is Alex Axe, and I'm objecting mostly for item D4 because after speaking with Marguerite yesterday, who is, who is with Escape Artists, I think there needs to be more discussion about the language for podcast. Right. Because there's a problem. Uh, excuse yeah. me, if I... I, yep. So we just recently, last year I believe, adopted a slightly new procedure. So the procedure now is supposed to be that the chair just specifies a time and we, we vote on that immediately. And if it's defeated, then the whole mechanism of not filling the blanks and the whole thing occurs. So the right yep. thing you know, to do would be, for example, to vote on five minutes here or my show of hands or whatever. I mean, I, I will note that the only one I object to is, is less time for D4. So if you want to, like... Reword okay. that for and say five minutes for everything, but D4 and D5, I'll keep my mouth shut. We can always extend time anyway. Oh. Every time, Alex. Thank you, Alex. 
Uh, all right, let's try with five minutes for everything and 20 minutes on D4 and D5. Any objections to that? Terry, sit down. <laughs> you can't make me sit down when I'm not in my um, thing of Sergeant in Arms. And this is me, the WISFUS member, Terry Neal. Um, I, I think we need more time for the Lodestar thing. So I wonder if it would be uh, more conducive to d just do it one at a time instead of as a, as a lump. Right, I was just trying to save us time. <laughs> it doesn't work, does it? Yeah. No, it <laughs> doesn't. Yep. My name is Kate Secor, and I have a point of parliamentary. Talk louder. And I have a point of parliamentary inquiry. Yep. When we were going through things one by one, there was an opportunity for the membership to rise and either object to consideration or move to postpone indefinitely. Now that we're going through things in a lump like this, what is the mechanism for that specific motion for individual items on the agenda? Postpone indefinitely would still be in order at uh, consideration. Uh, sometime afternoon in the last 20 minutes. Ah. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes, certainly. Well, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, yes. <laughs> I'm on the head table. In the While I'm doing this, a note to people at varying heights. First, push down on this or pull up on it, then adjust this to get it to you. It works much better that way. Uh, <laughs> Mr. No, Mr. Chairman, I do not yield. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Uh, that's right. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chairman, um, the, the, uh, the motion to postpone indefinitely is actually only in order at the preliminary business meeting. Um, perhaps it would be, uh, may I suggest it might be a better, uh, once, if you set a blanket debate time, mm -hmm. to then go through the items yeah. and just say what you did, the debate time is on that. Now, you, uh, if I might suggest, an attempt to sort out a default debate time is to give once again your proposed debate times and then ask if there's anybody who wishes any of any one of those items taken and dealt with separately. That's a possibility. Right, no, let's just go through them. Sort right. up. Shall abandon that, therefore, since everyone seems to have different opinions. Pity. All right, let's look at the standing rule changes. Item A1, restricting ratification amendments. I say five minutes on that. We can actually deal with that here if anybody wishes to speak to it. Does anybody first have, have any different debate time? Seeing none, five minutes is set as debate time. Does anybody wish to use some of that debate time and talk about this, or shall we leave it till tomorrow? At the back. Oh, uh, no, Cliff. 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 Ah. I believe Cliff is yielding to that. Yes. You can speak first if you want to. Um. Ah. Yeah. One of the makers was rising. Absolutely. Sorry. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my name is Cliff Dunn. Uh, the primary purpose for this, as indicated in our commentary, was that there has been there there's been a, been a tendency for attempts to amend things in a substantial way at the uh, ratification meeting, and we do feel that it would be much better if the membership at least knew if an, a major amendment was coming down the pike. There's a, the underlying concern was that you could move to either suspend the rules or overrule the chair as to whether something was a uh, greater versus lesser amendment and it, the business meeting could basically be ambushed and overrun by, in some years, a re relatively small and motivated crowd, thus seriously altering an, an amendment that was proposed. The two-year ratification procedure exists for a reason and we wanted to ensure that people were not caught by surprise. The speech against the uh, standing rule change? Anyone wish to speak against it? 
Seeing none, we may as well consider it now. Uh, those in favour of the making the standing rule change, please show. <laughs> Looks pretty good to me. Those against? <laughs> a couple. Right, we have a standing rule change passed. Many to about three. Yeah. Sorry. Yep, please. <laughs> Martin Pine, PYNE. Uh, parliamentary inquiry. Would a motion to s make the rule change effect immediately under Constitution 513? Is that at, would that be timely later in the meeting, on a sep on a future day, or would it have to be made either now or previously to th the adoption? So is that for this rule, the one we just voted on? Yes, the question is, if, you, if someone were to make it, would a motion to make it take effect immediately requiring a two-thirds vote under 513, is that timely? When is that timely? It's effective immediately. Um, I can't see that it would actually be effective at this point because it would require us, it would require anybody wishing to propose an amendment to have done so two weeks ago. <laughs> Which is kind of difficult, <laughs> absent a time machine. <laughs> so yeah, we could make such a motion and have it have effect, but in this particular case, I don't see that it's possible. <laughs> right. Changing the deadline for submission for new business, item A2. Again, set five minutes on this. Any objections? Anybody wish to speak to it at the back? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kate Secor, and we proposed this measure because two weeks seems like an awfully short amount of time for the poor secretary to have to deal with all of the business and get it out, and then give everyone enough time to actually read it and think about it and talk about it and see what they want to do. So we said, well, move the deadline back for a month. Honestly, if you want to move so badly that you have thought about it ahead of time, constructed your language, found your co-sponsors, and you're not ready a month out, I'd be shocked. I think everyone's probably ready a month out. It's not that big of a change, and I think it makes people's lives a lot easier. Thank you. Elspeth, I think. Hang on. Yeah. Is there a way to make this effective directly? Elspeth Kovar, sorry. Um, is there a way to make this effective directly after this World Con? This will come into effect directly after the end of the business meeting, regardless of what anything else we do. That's what I wanted to check. Yep. Thank you. Does anybody wish to speak against the proposal? Yes. Don. Hi, I'm Donald Eastlake. Uh, so I, I don't really think this ever increasing early notice thing is really necessary. Uh, I don't think there was any particular problem before when uh, the uh, deadline was very late, sort of right at the business meeting. The very simple amendments were sometimes submitted very late and went through it, they were simple. Complicated amendments submitted very late almost always went down in flames. And you know, people who want their amendment to have support get it out early and you know, and, uh, campaign for it, whatever they, they feel they need to do to get people to understand and support it. So I, I, just don't, I don't, you know, and if the deadline is too late for the secretary to get it into the agenda, then it's the responsibility of the maker of the motion to print up copies and bring them to the business meeting. It's a requirement in the rules. So, you know, secretary can set a deadline when, and if stuff's after that, then it's no longer the secretary's problem to, to get copies. So I don't really see it necessary to make things earlier. Thank you, Don. Uh, Linda? <laughs> as, as someone with several years experience, <laughs> I find that it's, it's harder for people to submit things later if they want to have to make their own 200 copies. I like to travel before I come to a convention. I realize that's selfish. But it also, I also know how long it takes me to gather some of the information from people, particularly the financial reports. 
Having an earlier deadline actually works better for that because the people generally who have to prepare the financial reports are also working on the Worldcon. If they have an earlier deadline, they can it'd be easier for them to meet the deadline. Also, I think it would stop these last minute, um, somewhat sometimes trivial proposals that get made. But basically, I think it gives, having an earlier deadline gives people more time to think about what's going to happen, what changes they want, and it's to everybody's benefit. Thank you. Speech against? Todd Dashoff, move to call the question. Who wishes to speak? Joni. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else wish to speak? <laughs> right. Um, we've been proposed to call the question. Is there a second on that? Second. Yep, lots. Right. Uh, on the motion to close the question, those in favour of closing the questions, please show. Those against? Right, motion passes. Now call the question. Those in favour of the motion to amend the standing rules, please show. Those against? Yep, yeah, pretty much passed. <laughs> many, to quite, many to a few. <laughs> Thank you. All right, resolutions. We have no resolutions this year. We don't need no resolutions. So we just have to set time limits for the business passed on. Um, on the mark, question C1, five minutes. Any objection? Seeing none, it will be five minutes. Actually, parliamentary inquiry. Uh, Jesse Lip, uh, Deputy Chair. Uh, I believe our standard practice has been to set debate at an even number of minutes to help make the timekeeper's life easier. I don't care. If the timekeeper <laughs> doesn't care, then I guess it doesn't matter. Right. I can do we'll. <laughs> 30 seconds is a time, yes. Um, right. Uh, C2, again. Five minutes, any objection? Seeing none, five minutes. Make room, again, five minutes. Any objections? No, good. And finally, the uh, Lodestar, the Young Adult Award. 10 minutes on that, people having said they want to debate it. Any objection to 10 minutes? Nope. Set. We will get that. Right. That just leaves us to deal with new constitutional amendments. And since we've been underway for three quarters of an hour, I think we should take a ten minute or so break and uh, raid the coffee at the back, <laughs> which I assume is provided by Google. I know tomorrow's was to be provided by Google. <laughs> Thanks, Google.